All right, so welcome to the second part of wrapping up Newton's laws. We're going to be looking mostly at forces in horizontal and vertical motion, not so much incline right now. Let's look at four. A helicopter accelerates upward at four meters per second squared, carrying a package of mass of 70 kilograms on a rope two meters long. What is the tension in the rope? So we've got a box and it's got a cable attached to it basically, and we need to draw a free body diagram of that thing. So up, up, somewhere up here is a helicopter that's also attached to that rope. But let's do the free body diagram, it's so important. That's one of our very first steps that we do. So we've got the force of gravity still pulling down on that box, and we have the force of tension pulling upwards on that box. We also know that this thing is accelerating in an upwards direction, and a lot of times it's going to indicate what direction is positive to us. So if upwards is, if it's accelerating upwards, we're going to say that this is positive up here and this is negative down here. So we've got that free body diagram drawn, and that's our ultimately most important first step that we have to do when we're doing these problems. The second step is to come to Newton's second law, which says our net force, or the sum of all the forces on the object, are equal to the mass times acceleration of the object. All right, so what are the forces acting on it? Well, we've got the force of tension, and it's positive, and the force of gravity, and it's negative. So let's do the sum of those forces. We've got the force of tension, positive. The force of gravity, it's negative. So we're going to put a minus, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. So Let's uh, <clears throat> get ready to solve for tension. That means we're going to have to move the force of gravity to this side over here, right? So let's do that. All right, so we have mass times acceleration plus the force of gravity. Cancel that on this side, moved it over to the right side, and we added it over here. Okay. So now we've got an equation for the force of tension, we can start substituting in some numbers. We know the mass of the object is 70 kilograms. It is accelerating at 4 meters per second squared, so I'm going to plug that in right here, plus the force of gravity on the object, which would be 70 times 9.8. Well, why is that this way? Why is it 70 times 9.8? Well, let's, let's, let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to erase that line right there real quick. Why is that 70 times 9.8? Well, that's because when we look at the force of gravity, it's equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. This is really weight right here, force of gravity, which is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. All right. So now let's plug in, let's, let's do that math real quick. So that force of tension then would be 966 newtons once we added up that 280 and that 686. All right, so let's look at number five. An object that weighs 40 newtons is supported by a rope that can exert a maximum of 42 newtons before breaking. What is the greatest upward acceleration that the rope can give to the object? Okay, so again, when we do this, that first important step, we've got to look at free body diagram here. So we've got this, we've got the force of gravity or the weight of the object pulling down on it, and then we've got the force of tension pulling up on that object. All right, so the all important second step, so there's our first step. Remember, just like in the last one, all important second step, is going to be the sum of the forces equals ma. So what forces are acting on it here? Well, we've got tension and gravity. Let's make one of them positive, one of them negative. So let's do the force of tension being positive and the force of gravity being negative, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of that object. All right, and then let's solve for acceleration this time. So let's get rid of mass here and divide this side by mass. And now we get acceleration. It's going to be the force of tension minus the force of gravity divided by the mass. Now, we're looking at a maximum tension in that rope that can be 42. So when the tension 
is 42. So when this is equal to 42, that rope will break. We still know the, the weight of the object, it is 40 Newton. So let's plug in some numbers. We know that when the tension is 42, it'll break. That weight won't change, it's 40. Then the mass of the object right here, we need to divide by the mass and we'll get the acceleration. Well, how do we get that mass? Well, let's come back to the weight of the object and we need to use a second equation here. And it's very common on EOC and 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 many tests to use more than one equation. Tax test does the same thing. So we've got to make sure that we get you used to using more than one equation. So we can say weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So we've got mass over here. Let's solve for mass. Get rid of acceleration. So the weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity will give us mass. So mass is weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So mass, the weight again being 40 newtons divided by uh, 9.8 here. So when we do 40 divided by 9.8 we get 4.08 as our mass. So we'll plug that in over here. Alright, so acceleration is going to be equal to the difference between these two which is 2 over 4.8 or if we did 4 it's about a half so 0 0.5 is, that's our approximate acceleration 0 0.5 meters per second squared if we went through and did the actual, use the calculator, we'd find it's really 0 0.49 meters per second squared either way. I'm fine with either answer. Alright, now, how much force is required to lift an 80 Newton object with an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared? So, let's do that next. Now, this one, we don't need a free body diagram on it because there's only one force that we're really looking at this ob on this object. And we just have to um, uh, counter that force. Well, I'll take that back. I'm going to go ahead and draw that free body diagram. We've got an object that's got a force of gravity. And then we're going to try and pull that up and accelerate that object. Upwards. So we've got to figure out what that force is going to be to overcome that force of gravity and then to accelerate it at 10 meters per second squared. So let's do the sum of all the forces e is equal to ma. Okay, so that force that you're pulling up minus the force of gravity is going to be equal to ma. So to figure out that force, we're going to have to take mass times acceleration of that object and then, then add to it the weight of the object to get that force there, that total force to accelerate it at 10 meters per second squared in an upward direction. We know that that force of gravity or the weight of the object is 80 newtons there, but what is the mass? What is the mass of that object? Well we've got to come back to that weight equation mass times acceleration due to gravity. So divide out acceleration due to gravity on both sides and we get the mass. So mass is weight over the acceleration due to gravity. Now in this case I'm going to use the acceleration due to gravity being 9.8 again. Okay, because we have this number 10 up here. I just want I don't want you to confuse the two. So 80 divided by 9.8 and we come up with 8.16 kilograms as the mass of the object. So we're ready to plug in some numbers. The mass of that object being 8.16. The acceleration is given to us as 10. And then the weight was 80, the force of gravity on it, 80. So we're going to be looking at taking 
81.6 plus 80 and we're going to get 161.6 newtons of force to lift that thing up. Okay. Or if we stuck with significant figures we could say about 160 newtons of force there. Now, let's look at another one, number seven. A student that weighs 700 newtons stands on an elevator scale. What does the scale read when the elevator accepts, uh, accelerates upward at two meters per second squared? And this is a very common problem. We call it relative weight. Okay, so if you stand on a scale and it suddenly goes up, it, you feel heavier. It feels like you're going down into the floor of the elevator. So you feel he heavier when it accelerates up. And then when that floor, the elevator goes down, accelerates downwards, you feel lighter. It's like you're almost floating there for a second if you're in a really fast elevator. So we're going to be trying to figure out what that scale would weigh depending on the acceleration of the elevator. So we'll be doing a free body diagram here. We've got the force of gravity on the person. Okay, But then we also have the force of the scale pushing up on that person here. Okay, and those are going to be equal and opposite to each other. So there's our free body di diagram. The second step is to use Newton's second law, F equals MA. Okay, and We've got two forces. Since it's going upwards, let's make upwards positive here and downwards negative. Okay. So now let's do the force that that scale is reading, the normal force. So we've got that normal force right here. And that, oops, 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 sorry, need to erase that. That's a mistake there. Let me do, let me to make an equal sign. Okay, let's erase that. Got the normal force there, upwards, minus the force of gravity, because it's negative, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. Okay, so if we want to know what that normal force is to see what the scale, because that scale is reading the normal force, we'll solve for normal force. So MA plus FG, we have to move that FG to the other side to solve for normal sort, sort force, cancel it out there, move it over here, okay. So now let's start plugging in some numbers that we know. We need to know the mass of the person. We'll figure that out in just a second. We know the acceleration of the system is going to now be 2 meters per second squared. And we know the weight of the person is 700 newtons. So the only thing that we need to figure out is the actual mass. And from previous problems, we know it's the weight divided by 9.8. So let's do that again. So weight 700 divided by 9.8. And that gives us... 71.4 kilograms. So I'm going to plug in that right here, 71.4 kilograms. All right, so now we can solve for normal force. 71.4 times 2 is 142.8 plus 700, and that gives us 842.8 newtons of force, or if we're kind of looking more Figs, we would actually have to round that to about 800. Uh, either way is fine. You know, if you if you said this was your answer, said the other 800 is your answer. I mean, you know, six to one half dozen of the other. Let's let's stick with 842, 842.8 newtons right now. That's that's well, uh, just kind of what I'm looking for there, even though it's not true sig figs. Right now, what does the scale read when the elevator accelerates downward at six meters per second squared? So, so again, we have that person standing in the elevator on the scale, but this time when you go down the scale, you know you should be, you should weigh less. You feel like you weigh less. So, we'll still have the same free body diagram: the force of gravity pushing down on the person, and then the scale pushing upwards on the person. Okay, but this time it's going to be accelerating downwards. All right, and I'll finish this one up on the third part to the to the uh, series here.